Welcome to the growing agriculture Saskatchewan election debate. I'm your host today, Sean Haney of realagriculture.com and Real Ag Radio. You can hear every day on Rural Radio 147 on Sirius XM. Today's debate is presented by APAS and Sask FSA. Thank you very much for their uh, initiation to make this all happen today. We're really looking forward to a lot of the discussion today. There are some key issues in agriculture that really should have a, a bigger piece of the conversation in this election and we're going to focus in on those issues here today. Uh, what I want to make sure is we get to our panelists and we hear uh, from them. I want the panel to introduce themselves before we get to some of the main questions we're going to hear from the parties today on the program. Starting with Todd. Hi Sean, uh, my name is Todd Lewis. I'm a grain and oil seed producer and a farmer at Gray, Saskatchewan. And I'm the president of APAS. Thanks Todd. Uh, my name is Miles Thorpe. I am uh, a farmer in eastern Saskatchewan near Spy Hill, Saskatchewan. I am uh, the president of Sask Farm Stewardship Association or Sask FSA. Thanks Sean. Uh, Ian Boxall, farm in the northeast part of the province in Tisdale and I'm the vice president of APAS. So from our presenting organizations today, we, we came up with some key topics and key questions that are on the minds of producers across the province. And we put those questions out to the parties that are running in this election, and we got some of the responses. So without any uh, further delay, let's get to some of these questions, and we're going to break them down as a panel based on what we hear today from the candidates. Hi, my name is Scott Owens from Maidstone, Saskatchewan, in the northwest corner of the province near Lloydminster. And I have a question for the political parties today. Success of modern farming and ranching in Saskatchewan is built on research and scientific development much of it paid for with public funds through universities and our research centers. What's your party's position on public funding for ag research? Saskatchewan producers should be the ones to benefit from agricultural research. Seed varieties and innovations that are developed using public funding should be made available to everyone to improve the bottom line for Saskatchewan producers. Not big companies with head offices in Germany or New York or London. The Sask Party has not committed to standing up for producers. They haven't been willing to say no to the big companies. They haven't been willing to protect farmers when it comes to intellectual property. They'd rather stand up for corporate interests than for the right of farmers to save their own seeds. We support science. We support investment in agricultural research. New Democrats will ensure that research that is funded by the public will benefit all producers, not just big companies. We'll legislate a right for farmers to save their own seed. We have a checkoff system that partially funds some of the research that is being done out there. And this is important research. We have a history, we have a legacy of innovative research, agricultural research in this province. And we're gonna make sure that that continues. But it's important to make sure that producers have a say in how their dollars, their checkoff dollars are spent, what, their, what that money is used for, and to make sure that that research, the benefit of that research come back, comes back and benefits Saskatchewan farmers. We're strongly in favor of it. I did my university degree in biology at the University of Saskatchewan. I've been involved in agricultural projects in my youth. I think that we need to be spending a lot more money on research into agricultural development. And we need to be taking what we learn and investing as a province into the discoveries that we make so that the people of this province can also profit from the breakthroughs, from the discoveries, from the opportunities that are created. Investing in research through the public purse is great because we receive the benefits from it, both from increased revenue from agriculture and through owning shares in the companies that are going to produce these innovations in the future. Obviously, I'm very proud of our government's uh, position on research and, and how we have funded research. Very proud of the fact that we've increased uh, agriculture research by over 140% since we formed government. Uh, we are now well over uh, $32 million in, in, in research that we fund right now in the province of Saskatchewan. And that's dedicated to obviously to agriculture research and livestock research in all aspects of it. And we also look at working how we can work with the private sector on research dollars as well. So the one thing I do want to really say is with the investment that we're making in agriculture research, we are attracting some of the most brightest minds from around the world. 
that really look at what we're doing here in research in agriculture sector here in the province of Saskatchewan. When you look at the crop side, it well over around $13 million this year into crop research. And you look at it, the livestock side at about $8 million. It's important dollars that we are spending in research dollars here in the province of Saskatchewan. With the opening of the uh, Livestock Forage Center of Excellence uh, outside of Saskatoon, which is leading edge research in not only in North America, but around the world, when you can attract uh, professors and researchers from around the world to do that type of work. Other things that we're very, very proud of, obviously, is the uh, Food Centre in Saskatoon with over $13 million invested in the Food Centre. We are seeing and we're hearing of young entrepreneurs here in the province of Saskatchewan that are developing new food products and value-adding processing here in the province of Saskatchewan. So research is really uh, fundamental for, for our government and I'm very proud to say uh, of the dollars that we invest in research and uh, I hope we continue. Well, I've had the pleasure of being at that university and talking to the bright young minds there and see how excited they are about agriculture research, not only here for the province of Saskatchewan, but for around the world. Well, we heard from the three parties on public funding of agricultural research. Let's hear what our panel has to say. Todd, I'll start with you. Uh, does this really come down to public versus private, or is there like a happy middle? Uh, there's a happy middle, and I think really in the province of Saskatchewan, we've, we've seen that. Uh, the province has always stepped up really successive governments uh, with agricultural funding on the research side and uh, we've seen the results at the U of S uh, crop development center you know the, the food center there as well uh, you know the global institute for food security those are just examples of of in Saskatchewan right within our border are some of the leading leading minds and uh, and really thoughts in agriculture and, and, and at the same time we've seen it you know even on our manufacturing side uh, with uh, some of the agronomic innovations that have come out of the province as well. So I think uh, the government and uh, all the parties uh, talk about the importance of government remaining in the game. I think it's important that uh, uh, research isn't short term, it's long term and it requires long term funding and I'm happy to see all the parties recognize that we need to see continued long term funding and, and it's always important I say is that when you talk about check offs and so on, that's private money, that's farmers money that's going in there and we're private. So it's, a, it's important to realize that as well. Private isn't just, uh, doesn't necessarily mean a big comp company or, or, or an outside company. It's farmers have uh, put millions of dollars through our checkoff system and we have a very robust and uh, good checkoff system and uh, good, good uh, uh, crop, uh, be it wheat, wheat commissions, canola commissions, all those commissions have done a wonderful, the crop commissions have done a wonderful job of uh, directing farmer, farmer led research for the last number of decades. You know, Miles, what, what I find interesting on this one is that it's easy to get the pom-poms out and say, well, of course, research, it's great. But I didn't hear any dollar amounts. So you know, is there a question here about, like, you know, how, how, much, should, how much money should be going into long-term research to you know, fund some of these, these things that are going on at some of the universities and public institutions? Yeah, I mean, it, it, a dollar amount is, is, like you said, is tough to nail down. Um, cause like in the breeding programs and the research, it's not a short-term commitment. I mean, when you're trying to develop these new varieties or new te technologies or techniques, you can't, it's not just a one year or two year commitment. You're quite often, you're looking at three, five, 10 years or longer. And, you know, you need to have a consistent source of funding and, and uh, you know, keep on that for a number of years. Because if you're at year seven and of, uh, of a maybe of a breeding program and you have two or three more years to go and the funding goes, well, that's first seven years is all for naught and the money is wasted. So we need to make sure that whoever's in power has a policy or a, has a directive that they're going to invest in this in the long term and, and remain committed to it. Ian, do you, do you think some of the people that live in the city of you know, Regina or Saskatoon, or you know, the two major cities in the province, do you think they have a hard time understanding, well, why are we putting all this, these public dollars into research for uh, an industry? Why don't you know, why do our tax dollars have to fund that? Do you think that's a, one that's a bit of a hurdle? I think it probably could be. I think there should be some people that might question that. I think we need to educate them on the public good. I think like Todd mentioned, producers have money invested in there. I think uh, agriculture is the main driver in this province. So investing some money into research to give us the tools to continue to be that economic driver in this province is probably dollars well spent. So I was happy to hear that all parties, you know, continue, said that they would continue the investment. 
right, so I think we need to educate the public on the fact that there is some public good in that money and, and show them how they, get, how they will get that back. Yeah, what, what's their return on investment, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, so Todd, how do you find the balance? And I, I started by asking about, you know, in the middle part, because if, if you set up a, a program in Saskatchewan where it's, it's, it's totally slanted towards the public institutions, you, you disincentify private companies from coming in and, and trying to get a return in this market as well. So how, how do you balance that? Yeah, that's always the ongoing question, and it's uh, it's uh, got to be a, a you know a three P partnership, four P perhaps you know private, government you know public the public side uh, uh, you know and producers as well, right? And it's got to be there's got to be managed somehow that uh, it's it isn't tilted so hard you know to just public and producer that the private people won't come in, and uh, they've got to see an opportunity for return investment, and, and it is a difficult balancing act, and uh, you know, it's something that's got to continue to work on it, and uh, you know, as long as we, as we can be ensured that the public part's going to be there, I think we can get to the point where, where we'll attract more private as well. Now, th th there's been extension cutbacks across the country. Uh, Alberta, Ontario, you know, uh, a wheat specialist retires or a canola specialist and they're not rehired. It's sort of, you know, that position just sort of goes away. Uh, th those extension people are some of the people that are on the ground that are doing some of that field research. I didn't hear a lot about extension in the three answers at all, Miles. Am I reading too much into that? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it, the extension work is often overlooked because it's, a lot of it is, it's not glamorous. It's behind the scenes work. A lot of, you know, you're out, out and about on the farm fields and local offices and what really the extension offices really provide in addition to the you know the large research centers is the localized knowledge um, you know there is a lot of small research farms that are somewhat uh, publicly funded around and they provide a lot of valuable insight to that local region you know I farm in southeast Saskatchewan there's one around Yorkton another one Redfers and they can do the same trial and have completely different results just based on that you know that small distance so for a farmer to be able to access and see what's happening on on their local level is very important too, and you know that that is also what the extension uh, uh, people would do as well. Ian, do you think that farmers should have more input into what research gets done I inside the province, or is it adequate? I think farmers are always going to want to say. I think in the same token, whether it be public, you know, private research, if the industry doesn't bring us something we can grow, we're not going to buy it. So the research needs to be something that can be produced here in Saskatchewan. And I think farmers are always going to want to have some say into what our portion of the money goes to. And I think we probably deserve that as well. Saskatchewan Farmers Voice is the magazine of APAS, the Agricultural Producers Association of Saskatchewan. It's delivered free to 35,000 farm mailboxes in Saskatchewan three times a year. In every issue, Farmers Voice explores the challenges facing Saskatchewan's agricultural producers, covers important news in the world of agriculture, and of course, features farm dogs from across the province. If you'd like to receive Farmers Voice, email info at apaz.ca to sign up for a free subscription, or read the latest issue online at apaz.ca. The Agricultural Producers Association of Saskatchewan, APAS, is Saskatchewan's nonpartisan, democratically elected agricultural policy and advocacy organization. APAS represents farmers and ranchers in 135 rural municipalities across the province. We create solutions to the challenges on Saskatchewan farms, and then we take these solutions to the provincial and federal government to help them make better decisions. If your RM isn't currently part of APAS, ask your council to buy a 12-month trial membership. Learn more by visiting apaz.ca.